there, orbit. 158 minute meters margin. That's all you need. This is an orbit. Hey guys, I'm Gaspachian and it's time for even more rambling. This time we actually have a topic. We're going to get into low Earth orbit in 100 seconds or less. This is pretty much a spoiler episode for, um, for what Cosmonaut Crash is doing on his channel. He's spending a lot of time trying to achieve this and I thought, well... Crash, you've got more interesting content to produce. I'll, I'll just help you out here, bro. So first bit of this challenge is to get up into space quickly. You've got 100 seconds to be up in space. You have to finish your orbital insertion in space or you will not be in an orbit. If you finish it in the atmosphere, you're suborbital. So if we do that, everything else will fall into place. And I'll show you shortly what I talk about. To get 140 kilometers above the launch pad in 100 seconds, you have to be traveling at an average speed vertically of 1.4 kilometers per second. This is far away from any regular ascent profile you would ever try. This is not the realm of gravity turns. This is the realm of going straight up in a line and doing some crazy Pythag Pythagorean trickery to end up in orbit. And I'll show you a test run, but uh, yeah, the thing is, you crash and probably many others of you are, are sticking to your RO instincts where gravity turns are necessary. This is not the, one of those, those times. This is the time where you need to go straight up and keep on heading straight up until you're traveling at pretty insane speeds. Because that 1.4 kilometers per second, that's an average you need to stick to. And you're starting off from scratch, you're starting up from nil. So go up, go up, don't fucking turn. That's that's rule number one of this challenge. And everything else, all other issues that you may have sort of fall into place once you do that. There's one more, and that's about vehicle design that we'll add to, but like other issues Cosmon Crash run into, are those of aerodynamics with Ferrum Aerospace just tearing his vehicle apart and um, and heat where his components just burn up. Now if you leave the atmosphere quickly by going straight up the atmosphere will not be, be there to tear your craft apart in, in, in various unexpected ways. Now, you may say something like, well, okay, if we're going to be traveling so fast, you're going to need heat shielding. And the thing is, no, because, again, heat is just an issue when you're down low in the atmosphere. We'll be leaving that region as soon as possible. And uh, this shielded procedural tank, that's enough period for any craft, I would say, to survive a s steep initial ascent followed by by a flip around and um, yeah so you don't have to worry about your gravity turn you don't have to worry about heat and you don't have to worry about aerodynamics as long as you start going straight up initially and you keep going straight up until your speed is such that your average vertical velocity over the ascent is going to be at least 1.4 kilometers per second, such that you are in space once you finish your orbital insertion. That was a long as sentence. So, with that said, the second question comes into mind, like how would you design a vehicle to do that? Well, you wouldn't design it using Hydrolox engines. You wouldn't use the RS-25D. You wouldn't use the M1, wherever that is. It's, um, there's Merlin, so the M1 is nearby, I think. If it's even in this install. Well, point is, I saw him try out a couple of those, and the, the, the issue is that 
those are built for another purpose entirely. Those are built for the purpose of being efficient. And that's that's all right if you are limited in your si in the size of your launch vehicle, if you're limited in any sh shape of weight restrictions or whatever. This, this is an open challenge and as such is assumed that the vehicle can be as large as it needs to be, cost as much as it needs to do, and weigh as much as whatever we, we, we decide it needs to weigh. So, since weight is not an issue, ISP will not be an issue either. We just need to be going fast, we need to have a high mass flux, we need to eject as much propellant as possible back our assets as, fa as fast as possible. This is not the engine to do that. You, you're going to want Russian engines to do this. You're going to want either something like the RD-170, the most powerful liquid engine ever. Like, it's, it's great. We're going to be using that for an upper stage, which is just ludicrous insanity. That's like having two Atlas Vs as an upper stage. It doesn't, doesn't really work like that in real life, but this isn't real life, so we, we, we will roll with it. So that's that's one good option for this challenge. It's got a crazy high thrust, and um, yeah, but um, like the optimum engine I find for this challenge turns out to be um, the Proton engine, the um, RD 250, 270 series, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, yeah, using this top config, like you, you, you've got 1.8 mega newtons of thrust from each of these engines, and we've got 19 of them. So that adds up to more thrust than the uh, Saturn V produced in its first stage in a rocket that weighs less than 700 tons. So that's that's good. Actually, it's not quite five times. Now that I think of it, it's enough. It it gets us going. And like you 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 could improve this design, shave a couple of seconds off your assault by by moving a bit of this fuel out into um, detachable boosters. Get your initial thrust to weight ratio even higher and have it progress in a more sane manner. Uh, but uh, to be fair, like this, this vehicle is a proof of concept. This shows that this challenge is possible with only two stages. You don't have to do any crazy hot staging or anything. You, even you just have to ha have a solid foundation of ideas. And the idea is go up fast and then go sideways fast. The thrust to weight ratio is the only thing that really dictates how fast you can get into orbit. And we've got plenty of it in this in this rocket you get you could get even more but this is just from a simple two stage design like there are insane rockets to break if you really want to go for it but um, but like if you, if you need something more complicated than this you 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 may be missing some crucial some crucial bit of information so yeah that's how you do it. You, like you, you, you don't go for the most efficient engines. You go for the highest thrust engines, especially considering the form factor. We can squeeze how many we want of these into a tight space. We could go for the RD-170 for the first stage as well, but as you can see, it's kind of big. It's going to c cover up as much space as seven of these smaller ones, and those smaller ones are going to give us more than seven times the amount of thrust. So that they they just end up being being a very very good and solid choice. It could be done with the RD-170 entirely if you wanted to do something like that, like both for the lower and the upper stage, or this entirely for both the lower and upper stage. But um, but probably not with only this for the lower and upper stage. Maybe. But it's not the simplest way. The simplest way is often. Oftentimes, he has used the tried and true Russian method. Russians like simplicity in their rocket designs, and uh, it's worked out well for them so far. So, 
no no exotic propellants no exotic super efficient engines it's all about going up and then going sideways and uh, it doesn't have to be elegant it just has to work that's how you do this challenge and i'll show you exactly how i did it so take care